I'm Devin Rich from Reef Dudes, and this is my reef tank. Now the tank itself has been up about a year now, and it's a water box 7225, which is a six foot peninsula. Now I'm a huge fan of the peninsula tank because it gives you essentially three tanks in one. Um, you can see it from all three different sides and it gives you just a really cool perspective. Now I did something a little bit unique in my house is I took out the banister and I actually put in the tank there. So as you're coming up the stairs, you get a really cool view of the tank. Um, you can kind of see through it, it kind of opens up the area. If you're sitting at the dinner table, you can see the tank. If you're sitting on the couch, you can see it. So it's really kind of in the central part of my home so that you can see it from every side, which I think adds a huge dimension to a tank. Now one feature I absolutely love and that everyone comments on is my floating light bar. Now this bar holds five Ecotec XR15 Radeon Pros and it does a fantastic job of lighting up the tank. Might be slightly overkill, but that's kind of the way I roll. The whole floaty design gives it kind of a really cool look and really kind of shows off the peninsula to another level. Like I, I really, really love this design. I've actually done it on my last couple tanks now. Now for the lighting profile, I actually have my own custom version that's based off the AB+, but it's much whiter in the afternoon time. So between the hours of about noon and four, the tank is much whiter, which I really do kind of like that natural reef look. Being a peninsula tank, I really didn't want to have any visible pumps on the tank, and it was a bit of a challenge to figure out exactly how to work that, but having those three sides clear just really enhances the look of the peninsula. To accomplish this, I went with two Ecotec MP60 Vortex, and there's one on either side of the overflow. They're currently running around 70 to 75% on reef crest mode, and these two pumps have been enough to move just about everything in the tank and keep that clean, crisp look everywhere. You can kind of see even the torches kind of two thirds way down the tank. They got some good movement in it, same with the Ghanis. You'll be able to watch them kind of calm down and then go crazy kind of as the flow ramps up and down. Now, if we take a look under the hood, my main drain comes down into the first chamber, which flows into an SK5000 filter roller. Um, now this is a special modified version that's custom made into my custom Geo's Reef Sump. And that filter roller, it's using all kind of like the motor, the rollers, the fleece and everything from the Clarisy, but it's built into a custom holder that kind of seamlessly fits into the sump. And that does a fantastic job of kind of removing all those particles before they add those nutrients to the water. Um, next over we have the NIOS 220 skimmer, which this guy is a beast and does a fantastic job of skimming. And if you see the tube, I actually ran a tube all the way up in, through the wall to my attic. And that runs through a CO2 scrubber to provide kind of fresh air and boost up my pH in the tank. Uh, next chamber over, we got a Prime Fuge. Um, and this I've actually just been running 24 seven and it's been growing macroalgae like crazy. I've harvested it twice in the last couple of weeks and gave it away to other reefers. Um, but I got that and I also have the little Reef Dudes light diffusers on there. And that just prevents the light spill from going into my skimmer and growing algae. Just less maintenance, keeps everything nice and tidy inside the sump. If we come around to the other side, you can see we've got our refugium, flows through a sponge, a little bit of media. Uh, we have a built-in reactor, so this holds a little bit of rofos and some carbon. Um, next over, it flows into the Vectra L2 return pump. So inside of here, i got the Neptune ATK for my auto top-off. We've got a nice little probe holder in the back and some testing and dosing lines. Now the return pump comes up and it tees off to a couple different things. First is through this media reactor and back in. And the other one flows up through a UV sterilizer. So it tees off, goes through a UV, and then goes into a cryptic reactor. Now the cryptic reactor just holds a bunch of biomedia. It's nice and dark and just helps provide extra kind of biomedia filtration for the tank. Now the main supplementation for the tank is a Geo's Reef cal Calcium Reactor. Now this is a custom reactor I had built, and custom because it uses an Ecotec Vectra S2 pump on it. Um, now I had a Vertex one before, but now I want something that was dead, dead quiet, so I had it custom made with the Vectra, which I knew would be super silent. Next over we have kind of the heart of the controller board. And inside of here I have an adaptive reef controller board, I got the custom Reef Dudes logo on top and we have a whole pack of Versas. So you may have noticed I have a whole slew of Versas in here and I have these guys doing just about everything on my tank for moving water around. Uh, so the first one's for the calcium reactor and that just runs 24 hours a day, keeping the water flowing through it and supplementing my calcium alkalinity. Uh, next one over is for my auto water change and I have one sucking water out of the tank and pushing it to the drain and I have another one pulling from my saltwater mixing station to the tank. So it currently does about 2.5 gallons a day. 
The next two over for dosing, one is dosing a 50% dose of flatworm stop and the other one is of coral booster. Now I don't actually have any flatworms, however it's claimed to make your corals and crust and grow a bit quicker so I'm experimenting with that. And the top four row is for dosing all of my trace elements. Now if we pop the board out, you can kind of see all of the bottles and stuff mounted on the back of it. So for trace elements, currently dosing replenish, restore, coral colors, and chato grow. And we got the flatworm exit and the coral booster on the bottom. Now also behind the cabinets, a little bit of the chaos mass is where all the wiring power bricks go. I do have the Alcatronic back here, which has my alkalinity currently every eight hours. On the coral side of things, I'm definitely a fan of having a mixed reef tank. I can never discriminate and just pick one type. So I have a huge love for Acropora and kind of how I decide the aquascape is it starts up higher on the right hand side and kind of slowly tears down as we go left towards the far end of the peninsula. And um, a little more softies on the far side, which kind of coincides with the flow being a little lower and a little more flow for all the LPS. Being that the tank's about a year old now, a lot of the acros are starting to settle in. They've been cresting and I'm starting to see some nice growth and better vibrant colors coming out of the tips of the new growth, which is always awesome to see. Fish-wise, if you haven't noticed, I'm definitely a tang lover. Um, in the tank, I actually have three yellow tangs, a purple tang, hippo tang, and a red sea sailfin tang. On top of that, we got a leopard wrasse, a redhead wrasse, there's a chorus wrasse, a couple different anthias in there, a chromis, azure damsel, royal gamma, coral beauty, bangai cardinals, uh, there's also mag mandarin dragonette, and probably a few others I'm not seeing right now, but definitely a little heavy on the fish load. However, everyone inside gets along really nicely. There's not really any aggression in the tank, and kind of the secret of that is really just feeding heavy making sure everyone's happy. At the far end of the tank, I also have this at least football size or bigger clam. Uh, this is a big squamosa, and this is arguably probably part of the filtration of the tank. This guy is huge and probably processes quite a bit of water, but super cool addition to the tank. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tour of my reef tank. Now, if you guys do want to follow along more, you can follow me on Instagram at, at reefdudes, uh, youtube.com slash reefdudes, or I even have a Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash reefdudes. Thanks again, Ecotech Marine, for having me on. It's been a pleasure, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this tour.